Hi everyone and welcome to another video from Class 47 Peter and in today's video I'm going to be doing a video on adding some roadside and lineside scenery to the layout. Now it goes without saying that the majority of the detail work on the layout is done but there's still some stuff that's yet to be done on the layout still so I thought I'd make a video on this because this will give you hopefully a rough idea of what to do if you're just starting to build a model railway layout and how to add some scenery particularly the line side slash track side and the road side scenery on the layout now to begin with in this video I'm going to be focusing on around this area around here what I'm going to be doing is you can see these two relay boxes there at the side of the track what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be adding some cable trunking. With this relay box down here by the signal box, I have added some cable trunking there, as you can see, which I did that ages ago, and I'm very pleased with that. That certainly does add the detail to the layout. Other than just having the relay boxes on the layout. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting some cable trunking around this area here so I'm going to have it running out of the relay boxes because they'll be hiding the cables from the relay boxes and I'll be adding them alongside this area here I may also at some point as well add some for this one around this area here but we'll start with these two here first so this is where this stuff comes in the wheels kits SS87 concrete trunking and this is the concrete trunking that I've used on the layout before as I showed you earlier now there are other manufacturers out there that make the concrete trunking but I do like the wheels kits ones because they are very nice and these are basically kits as you can see they are they come on a sprue and you just have to simply cut them off and then you just simply glue them on the layout Although you can paint them if you wish, but I decided to leave the, them the colour as they are. So what we get are a couple of junction units. I believe these are called T-junctions. And you get some lengths of cable trunking as well. So I've cut off all the trunking and one of the junction units that I'm going to be using on the layout. The other junction units are over here. I can always add them on again later if I want to. And I've just done that by using a Stanley knife to remove them from the sprue. So I'm now back at the layout and I'm going to be gluing the cable trunking around this area here. So I've got the trunking and the junction unit here. And to glue it in place, I'm going to be using the Yoohoo glue gel. As you can see, I'm starting to run out, so we'll need to get some more of this. Now, there are other adhesives out there that you can use, but this stuff, it really does work well. And so I do like using that, and I've actually used it to glue many things on the layout in place. And so it really does work well, so I do recommend this stuff.
Okay, so I do apologise if you couldn't see all that well what I was doing, but you know, it is quite hard to film and do this at the same time. So, at the angle I had at the camera, it's the only angle I really could have had the camera at, really. But hopefully, you could still see what I was doing. So, as you can see, I've now glued down the trunking, as you can see there. I've also glued another T junction there because there are two relay boxes there. So, there's two T junctions there, and I've got the cable trunking running all along here. It stops up to about where this foot crossing is, and then it continues all the way up to there. Because I have seen this in real life, where the, the trunking is like this. Where it stops at one and then carries on to another part, where there's a, a gap in the middle. So I thought I'd do that on this layout, because that does look very interesting. I have still got a piece of trunking left, but no matter, because that can still be used on the layout. And then in certain places I've used some of this stuff. The Javis Countryside Scenics Dark Green Hedge Foliage. And I've glued that in a few places, as you can see. And I've just done that just to cover up these bits that stick out here and any gaps in there to try and... Especially with this area here because I've added it so it looks like it's all covered over with foliage. And I am pretty pleased with how that's come out, I think. So we'll move on. Okay, so next I'm going to work on this area here because there is down here a, a relay box. You probably can't see it on camera because it's hidden beyond the signal gantry but I will take the camera off the tripod after and I'll show you so I'm going to glue the cable trunk in around here Okay, so there's that relay box I was talking about earlier, which you couldn't see because it's obscured behind the signal gantry, but you can see it now. So as you can see I've glued the cable trunk in all the way along here and up to this piece of track here and glued some going up to it there, which makes it look rather interesting and realistic. And also it's a bit different as well than just having it all laying across in a line, I think. And so you can see I've used one of the T junctions there because they're there to be used. And I've also glued some going up to the track there. But what I have done is, and this is something you can do, is I've taken a piece of the length of trunking and I've basically cut some bits off to size to suit basically, which is something you can do with these lengths of trunkings. And so they are quite nice. And what I have done is, something I did notice when I was gluing it together, is for some reason there was a bit of a gap under the trunking. So to hide that I've gone and laid down some of this ballast down and just simply covered the whole the gaps up underneath. Need to know a bit, there we go. So I'll just let the glue set because I have glued that down in place. That little bit of ballast. So that's now looking really good, that is. So I'm quite pleased with that. So now I'm going to add some cable trunking. Then why the this relay boxes?
So the cable trunking has gone down very nicely. I did have to raise up the relay box a bit because otherwise it didn't look right when I glued the cable trunking in place. So as you can see I've used a few of the T-junctions here which in doing that I think it does look more interesting on the layout. I've also added an extra bit of cable trunking on this bit here going up to the track there as you can see. So that looks nice now. So that's all the cable trunking now laid down in place. And so I am really happy with that. So that's now the track side slash line side stuff now done. Now we're going to move on to the adding roadside detail now. So what I'm going to use for the roadside scenery in this video is this stuff which is made by Knock if that's how you pronounce it correctly and these are the roadside crash barriers so I've unboxed the one lot of them as you can see here now the barriers they come on this sprue which I will cut them off and they do look quite nice and the detail on those is very nice and you also get these white posts which I'm not sure what they're for but they're also on that sprue as well so I'm going to get these cut off the sprue and then I'm going to glue them into place okay so I've cut all the crash barriers from the sprues from that one pack I've still got the other pack of them there to do but we'll do these first and then we'll come back to the others later I've also gone out and bought some more Yoohoo glue gel, there's another top of it over there and I've gone out and bought some more because I used up the last bit of it when I glued on the cable trunking so I'm going to use this glue to glue these on in place on the layout ok so the first area I'm going to put the crash barriers on is going to be along here in front of this hill here and the idea of the crash barriers is it's, it's there to stop the cars from crashing into things so instead the cars will crash into the barriers rather than crashing into the side of the hill just here so I'm going to get these glued on
Okay, so those barriers are now glued in place. And you will have noticed I used some of the cars which I popped up against the barriers to hold them in place, which is a method that does work rather well. Now I'm going to glue the other barriers around that area there, around this area here, along there by the edge of that station platform and around the turntable. However, because of the camera angle, I'm not going to film this bit because considering where the camera is, there's not going to really be much room for me to be able to film and work at the same time because I'm going to need to stand in this area here in order to do the gluing and otherwise if I have put the camera back a bit like move it to around this area here you're not going to really see me doing much at all so I'm going to do this off camera okay so I'm back and I'm going to show you what I've done first of all that little patch up there that's a bit wet. I've actually done some touch-ups with the black paint. I have added some more black paint there. I've done so down here because there was a bit of green there so I've put some more black paint down there to make it look better. And also I have done some touch-ups around there as well. But anyway so what I've done is I've glued the crash barriers alongside here just at the end of the station platform. And then what I did was I actually bent that part so it would go around the turntable there. I also did the same with this part of the crash barrier there, I actually did bend that a bit. And the same with that one as well, just so it would go around the turntable. I haven't bothered putting any more crash barriers along this bit here because, well, there doesn't really need to be. Because this bit here is where the traction engines to go into. Because this bit here is intended to be a steam rally where traction engines are going to be on display. So there doesn't really need to be any crash barriers along this part here, really. But I have put some there, because that's where the road is. And really, you'd only find crash barriers by the road, because this is not a road. That's why I haven't put them there. I've also put some crash barriers on this part as well, down along this side of the road, as you can see. And I've also added some crash barriers along here as well just at the front of this part of the station platform there as you can see which I do think they look really good there I think I do have two left as you can see here I've got no idea what I'm going to do with these and where I'm going to put them but I will keep them for the future so there's no need to throw them away because I might find a use for them in the future at some point so I'll get these put to one side for the time being. So that brings me on to the end of this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video because I thought it would be nice to do something a little bit different for a change. And I hope that this has given you an idea as well of how to do some trackside and roadside detailing on the layouts. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to leave you with a sure running session running a few locomotives one of them is a new locomotive that's making its debut on the channel so do keep an eye out for that one but as ever thank you for watching that's now bringing us on to the end of this video and I hope you've enjoyed and as ever subscribe to the channel and check out my other content and I'll see you again soon for the next video but until then stay safe and look after yourselves Bye.